Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI city-state guide, where today we are going to be taking a look at the scientific city-states. So to start things off, we're going to take a look at the envoy effects from these city-states, much like we have with the other types, and just like with the other types, there is going to be a difference between the effects in the base game and the expansion, so I will cover both. So you're going to receive these effects at 1, 3, and 6 envoys, and in both the base game and the expansions, the effect at 1 envoy is that you will receive plus 2 science per turn in your capital. So the 1 envoy is normally regarded as like, you know, the value point in a city-state because it gives you a, effectively a little bit of a bonus for not very much of a cost, and with the scientific city-states, I think that this point is very valuable early on in the game when plus 2 science can be a significant portion of your total science output, you know, in the first 10 turns, if you get an extra 2 science, that's pretty much like 50% extra science on your total empire output, which can push you quite a bit farther ahead of other people uh, that early on in the game. Later on, though, as you get farther in, an additional 2 science in the capital is going to be, you know, a minuscule amount of your total science output, so it becomes a lot less valuable. But if you're able to get the first meet on a scientific city-state, that can be incredibly helpful um, for a lot of different, you know, victory paths throughout the game if you're playing for science if you're playing for domination even if you're playing for culture getting two science early on in the game in your capital can make it a lot easier to make much more use of that early time to expand more to get more land to maybe go aggressive on somebody or maybe to build some early wonders so as a value point early on in the game i think that this additional plus two science in the capital is incredibly helpful at three envoys in the base game, you're going to receive plus two science in every campus district, and in the expansions, that two science will go to every library. And at six envoys, you get a similar thing. You get an additional two science in every campus district in the base game, and two science in every university in the expansions. So both of these effects, I think, are incredibly helpful when you're going for science victory, or even if you're just looking to get yourself a bit farther ahead in the tech tree without having to build many campus districts. Because these effects do stack, so if you have three envoys in two different scientific city-states, then you'll be receiving plus four science in every library, or four science in every campus district. The other nice thing is that for the base game, this does apply to the adjacency bonus of the campus district, so uh, with things like the Madrasa, you'll get extra faith output, and you can also double this, th this bonus with the uh, policy card that doubles your adjacency bonus on your campuses. Um, same thing with the expansions, with uh, getting these in buildings, you can use the policy card that gives you extra science in the buildings from the campus district to potentially double these bonuses as well. So if you're going for science victory, you can get a massive boost to your science output if you put envoys um, in scientific city-states. So for science victory, I would recommend you get three and six envoys in as many scientific city-states as you possibly can. If you're not going for science victory, it still can be incredibly helpful because it can get you a nice boost to your total science output without forcing you to build more libraries or to build more campus districts in other cities because um, maybe you'll be wanting to put other districts in those cities instead. So overall, the envoy effects for the scientific city-states are incredibly valuable, actually. Now let's go ahead and move on and talk about the suzerain bonuses that you get from the various city-states, or the scientific city-states, and just a reminder to those of you who may not be familiar with it, to become the suzerain of a city-state, you have to have at least three envoys in that city-state, and you have to have one more envoy than the next highest player. So, the first two city-states we're going to talk about here are Babylon and Bologna, uh, which Bologna was previously known as Stockholm in the base game, I think actually before Gathering Storm, so if you're in either the base game or Rise and Fall, then Bologna will be known as Stockholm. So Babylon's bonus is that you'll receive plus two science from each great work of writing and plus one science from each relic and artifact. So I think that this bonus is actually an incredibly useful bonus, but not for necessarily science victory, because if you're going for science victory, you're probably not going to be focusing a lot on putting down theater squares and getting great works of writing, so it's not going to give you a huge bonus to that, but the area where this can be incredibly helpful on is if you're going for culture victory and you want to keep up in science to get those texts that provide wonders um, without having to build too many campus districts, because... If you're going for a culture victory, you just kind of kind of naturally get a lot of great works of writing and maybe some relics and artifacts as well. So getting two science from each one can add up quite fast and make it so that you can keep up in the tech tree very easily without having to build pretty much any campus districts. Bologna's bonus is that their uh, districts with a building will provide plus one great person point of their type. So that would be like great scientists from campuses, great merchant points from uh, commercial hubs, you know, etc, etc. 
And Bologna's bonus is actually incredibly strong. You can spam out great people like super fast. You can get easily above 40 or 50 great people points per turn if you have the suzerainship of Bologna. And this is really good for pretty much all the victory types, honestly, except for maybe Faith. But even with Faith now that they made it so that having additional uh, profit points per turn will just generate like total Faith output, this still can be pretty helpful because getting those extra profit points will then get you extra Faith per turn. So... For almost any victory type, if you want to go for great people, which some of the great people in the game are really strong, I would highly recommend you think about Bologna because this city-state allows you to spam great people like no other, which is really, really strong. The next two city-states we're going to talk about are Fez and Geneva. So Fez's bonus is makes it so that when you use a unit to convert a city for the first time, you will receive plus 20 science per citizen in the city. Now, Fez is a scientific city-state that I generally find to be pretty darn awful. I, I generally think that its suzerain bonus is almost totally useless just because I don't really find myself playing for a religion that much just because of how slow a religion makes your early game and how difficult it makes it to actually get ahead in the early game if you're trying for a religion. That being said, though, on someone like Saladin, Fez is an amazing city-state because you can get a ton of huge, like, like, I say huge, but not really huge, but sizable science per turn, or just science bonuses by converting cities. All in all, though, I think that Fez is not really particularly good. The only, like, aspect that I ever could see it being good in is if you're going religion and science, which I very rarely do. So for someone like Saladin, or maybe even Nubia, or maybe Japan... I could see Fez being okay, but aside from that, I think that their bonus is just too specific and requires too much effort um, in other fields other than the science to actually make it worthwhile. Geneva's bonus is uh, that you will receive plus 15% science when you are not at war with any civilization. Uh, this one, very simple, very straightforward, and very good. If you're not at war with anybody, you get a straight up 15% science out, uh, output bonus, which is really strong because it's percentage based, so it scales as you increase the science output of your, the base science output of your empire. So later on in the game, you can get a ton of extra science from Geneva, and I think Geneva is just really a quite good city state. Hattusa is up next, and Hattusa makes it so that you will receive plus two uh, per turn of every strategic resource that you have revealed but do not have improved. And this, I think, is really good if you're going for a domination victory because there have been a number of times where I have been screwed over by not getting strategic resources in my land that have made me, you know, lose wars, uh, you know, not be able to take advantage of power spikes with, you know, a new unit type or something like that. So having Hattusa is kind of like a safety net that makes it so that no matter what, you know that you're going to be able to build units, which is incredibly strong for both offense and defense. So if that's something that you're concerned about in a game, and if you, you're, you know, if you're estimating that you're going to either need to attack somebody or that you're going to have to defend yourself, I would recommend that you become the suzerain of Hattusa. And the last city-state that we're going to talk about is Palenque, and Palenque is pretty simple. It makes it so that your cities with a campus will receive plus 15% growth. This is a bonus that I generally don't think is very good. It's okay if you're playing someone like Pachacuti that you're going to, you know, Pachacuti gets ridiculously big cities, so, and he's pretty much going to build campuses in most of them, so having Palenque can give him even bigger cities, but... For the most part, I don't find Palenque to be particularly helpful just because the extra population that you generally get from it in most games is not going to be worthwhile of all of the envoys that you're going to have to put into it. So unless you're going for a science victory that you just want the envoy bonuses, I would generally kind of avoid Palenque. And now let's go ahead and talk about which of these city-states is better to keep and which are better to kill. And I received a comment recently on one of my stream VODs about, you know, why would you want to take a city-state as opposed to keeping it in the game. So I'll just quickly go ahead and explain that. So the reason that you would generally want to keep a, a city-state in the game is to receive the yield bonuses and possibly the suzerain bonus as well. So say if you're going for a science victory and, you know, then it's generally a good idea to keep all of these scientific city-states in the game because of how good the extra science yields that you can get in your libraries and universities are. If you're going for a science game, though, and you meet a city-state like Armagh that you really are not going to need the faith bonus, you really don't want to have the monastery, there's pretty much no reason to keep that around, and it would be much more worthwhile for you to simply take the city's land, that way you have more land to work, that's another city to produce units, another city to produce districts, and thus another city to produce yields. So those are kind of the, the distinctions between keeping and killing a city-state, so I'm going to go through these scientific city-states and tell you which ones you should keep 
and which ones you should generally kill. So before I talk about that, as I mentioned, if you're going for scientific victory, uh, then I would generally advise that you keep all of these scientific city states just because of how good the yield bonuses are from having envoys in them. But if you're not going for science victory, uh, the city states that I would generally like to keep are Geneva, uh, Hattusa, Bologna, and I'm debating putting Babylon on there, but I'm not going to. So uh, the three that I would keep are Hattusa, Geneva, and Bologna, just because all of those provide uh, a lot of really good bonuses, even if you're not going for scientific victory. Um, then I don't know why I keep calling it scientific victory. It's called science victory, but you know, <laughs> you, you, you get the point. Um, but Bologna gives those extra great people points that really apply to pretty much every single victory type in the game. Uh, Geneva makes it so that you can get a lot of extra science without having to build campus districts. So even if you're not going for scientific... Vi I keep calling it that, man. That's going to drive me nuts. Even if you're not going for science victory, you still have to keep up in science. Otherwise, you could be conquered by someone with more advanced units. You might not be able to get to wonders fast enough, so people might build them first. So you need science. And Geneva makes it so that it's really easy to keep your science output up without having to take time to build campus districts or, you know, use the district slots for those districts. And with Hattusa, Hattusa is always like a nice, you know, safety blanket or security net that prevents you from running into the issue of not having strategic resources to build units to either defend yourself or attack someone else. So that is always a good city state to have just because it kind of prevents you from running into those tricky scenarios. The city states that I pretty much always kill are Fez and Palenque just because I think their bonuses are too situational to be really all that good. So with Fez the issue is that the only, really the only scenario that Fez is good in is if you're going Faith and Science which there are very few civs in the game that go Faith and Science. I mean really the main one is Saladin and aside from that I can't really think of very many that are strictly Faith and Science civs. So. For that reason, I find the bonus from Fez to be a little bit tricky and a little bit hard to use and really not applicable to a lot of my science games. With Palenque, the extra growth in cities is just a lot of the times not impactful enough to really warrant putting envoys into the city, so for that reason I generally don't like to keep it around. Not to mention that the benefit you get in Civ 6 for having large tall cities is really not as good as it was in Civ 5 just because the yields are a little bit lower, and it's generally more worthwhile to have a lot more small cities than a few tall cities, so for that reason I generally don't like to keep Palenque around. And the one that I didn't put in a category here is Babylon, just because really it depends on the game. Obviously if you're going for a culture victory then you want to keep Babylon around, or if you're just playing any, any Civ that might get some casual great works of writing, Babylon can be quite useful. And now to close things off, I'm just going to give rankings to these city-states in terms of best to worst, and as I've mentioned with the other videos from this series, these rankings are not so much concrete, because there is a lot of situationality that applies to how effective either of these city-states are. So take this list with a grain of salt, but if I had to give generally a best to worst ranking, it would be like this with Bologna at the top and Fez at the bottom, and all those guys in between as well. So as I mentioned, take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, because it really does matter what the situation of a game is as to, um, you know, judge how good a city-state is. But thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, if not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.